There is no Archimedean point from which those living through a mass psychosis can observe their collective madness. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. It, it was a renaissance of, of what I imagine it to be like when, when there was debate here going on with our founding fathers. That was the kind of debate that was going on. Let's skip through that. Bring in one of the jurors. That point is worth ruminating on and remembering. History is a political tool. History is not simply a record of what happened. History is a way to shape the future. History. No impeachment has ever been as ably prosecuted in the Senate. In no prior impeachment has a conviction been as overwhelmingly justified. Now the Senate is on trial to acquit itself. It must convict Donald J. President Trump is going to be acquitted. Trump. But at this point, the truth doesn't matter. What matters is who gets to write the history of what happened. All 100 senators know that, the House managers know that, everyone in the room knows that, for one simple reason. History is used to hurt some people and to help other people gain power. History is never neutral. President Trump committed a high crime or misdemeanor. That's the constitutional standard. And, and there shouldn't be the votes to convict him. That there, there's so much more to this story, but so many people are afraid to come out and to speak and to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. um, the silence is so palpable and it's, it's just outrageous. For, for me to say anything to Trump would be, it wouldn't matter because he, he just can't hear. Mm -hmm. It's all the other people that are so complicit in this. Um, that's who I would speak to is that, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Um, and what they've attempted, what they've alleged in the articles of impeachment is incitement. They haven't come remotely close in two days and 16 hours of presenting their case. They, they have spent 90 percent of their time to demonstrating that President Trump's conduct violated the law, that it constituted incitement, showing really powerful images and movies of, of the January 6th terrorist attack on the Capitol. That was horrific. All 100 of us lived through that, and, and it was despicable. We said that before, and we have laughed as we did, but actually it's not funny. People will believe this crap. Some already do. Anyone who was physically present at the Capitol that day knows it's ridiculous. Trump voters weren't trying to kill her, neither were other U.S. senators. A lot of the rioters were angrier at Mitch McConnell than they were at any Democrat. To some extent, what you saw on January 6th was an intra-party struggle. Not all of it, but some of it. An act of mindless destruction aimed at Republican leaders, born of long simmering frustration. The people who run the Republican Party don't care about the people who elect them. That has long been true. Republican voters finally figured it out. It's one of the main things they learned during the Trump years. But I have, I have zero idea. I have really trophy assets, and I guess they're disproportionately valuable because of the fact that they're trophies, but I have, I have zero idea. Gambling mostly with investors' money and counting on his customers to lose theirs. And on January 6th, they exploded. They were literally calling poor Mike Pence's name. He didn't do anything. They were furious with him. It is also an example of how Trump does business. Little of the money at stake is his own. Now, that's not a defense of anyone's behavior, much less a defense of rioting, which, unlike the other channels, we do not support and will never support. It's not even an ideological point. It's just true. That's what happened. When it is understood that a flood of negative emotions in conjunction with a weak and insecure sense of self can trigger a descent into madness, it becomes clear how a mass psychosis can occur. It's as if they were somehow channeling both Howard Jarvis and Howard Beale at the very same time. The former, the late California tax activist. The latter, of network movie fame. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore! All of which gave rise to a political movement that once counted among its key supporters a veritable who's who among American conservative lawmakers. So dissatisfied with the pace of change they demanded, they took on the GOP party establishment, spearheading opposition to government-run health care and help Republicans take back the Congress in 2010. A population first needs to be induced into a state of intense fear or anxiety by threats real, imagined, or fabricated. And once in a state of panic, the door is open for either the positive or negative reaction to unfold. But much has changed since then. 
The House Tea Party Caucus is now long gone. So too are nearly all of the 87 2010 House Republicans elected in the biggest GOP wave since the 1920s. If a society is composed of self-reliant, resilient, and inwardly strong individuals, a positive reaction can take place. But if Fiscal conservatives, those who remain... And yet the fight continues. Trillions in spending thanks to the global pandemic and exploding debt up from 13.5 trillion in 2010 up to 27 trillion today would seem sufficient ingredients for a Tea Party resurgence. But if it is composed of mainly weak, insecure, and helpless individuals, a descent into the delusions of a mass psychosis becomes a real possibility. But at this point, the truth doesn't matter. What matters is who gets to write the history of what happened. They said, go fight, mm. go fight, because everything's on the line. That's what they said. And when people fought, they came to fight, and then they fought Capitol Police, and now people are dead. And it was despicable, and every one of the violent criminals who engaged in that attack, including murdering a Capitol Hill police officer, every one of them should be fully prosecuted, should go to jail for a long, long time idiots that were out there, you know, placing themselves on the, the floor of the Senate chamber or that you, piece of, of what needed to happen for our democratic process. That was swift thinking and, and applauds. And, to and right there, Congressman, those are the mahogany. That's one of the mahogany boxes. You know, that they, there were so many people at that uh, Stop the Steal rally yesterday where they had they were under the impression that Mike Pence could somehow uh, derail uh, Joe Biden's win and, you know, and, and install President Trump. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. It is only if we accept the existence of a latent paranoid potential lurking in the recesses of the normal mind. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. That we can explain the mass delusions which led to the persecution of witches and the Nazi slaughter of Jews. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. Vast numbers of ordinary men and women held beliefs about witches and Jews which, if they had been expressed by one or two individuals instead of by whole communities, would have been dismissed as paranoid delusions. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. There are extremely primitive, irrational mental forces at work in the minds of all of us which are usually overlaid and controlled by reason, but which find overt expression in the behavior of those whom we call mentally ill, and which also manifest themselves in the behavior of normal people when under threat or other forms of stress. They spent all their time saying it was really, really terrible. All of us agree it was a terror attack. Violence is never right. But what they haven't been able to prove is that President Trump's speech on that day was the cause, the legal cause for it, mm -hmm. that, such that it would constitute incitement. And any standard they put forth for incitement? That doesn't even begin to tell the story. It doesn't even begin to tell the story of what our family went through and um, what he went through that day. By any measure, the rhetoric and angry language from the Democrats exceeds that of President Trump's, and, 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 and that they haven't even attempted to explain away. They go after people that, I guess you'd call them, uh, lean toward the right, and they wave American flags. In many cases, they're waving the American flag, and they love our country. It was a zero threat. Right from the start, it was zero threat. Look, uh, they went in. Uh, they shouldn't have done it. Uh, some of them went in and they're they're hugging and kissing the police and the guards. You know, they they had great relationships. Uh, a lot of the people were waved in and then they walked in and they walked out. He said they were hugging and kissing the officers. Uh, but listen, we are watching our own history being written before us right now. Yeah, and, and we may expect that we could see that from the president's defense team. I know that uh, you reportedly talked with his defense team tonight, you and a couple of other uh, senators who are Republicans and happen to be attorneys as well. Um, what goes through my mind was, is, is really outrage that not only um, the 850 MPD officers were that were there, but but officers from different jurisdictions, as well as Capitol Hill Police. It's diminishing. It is devaluing. It, um, 
The thing that is so profound is after he made those statements, the silence. Can you tell us anything about that conversation or how they're feeling going into tomorrow? This was a president of the United States inciting an, an insurrection, a terrorist attack on Congress. We observed 9-11. We remember the fact that there were attacks that landed, one that almost landed, which was an effort to fly an airplane into the Capitol, kill a lot of members of Congress. That almost happened. Here is a terrorist attack that did happen. So we observe 9-11, he says. Going forward, we must observe January 6th. Maybe we'll need a memorial on the mall. As Bachelot has said repeatedly in the last 24 hours, and very pointedly, we must, quote, never forget. Well, sure, when I grabbed a couple of other senators, I grabbed President Trump to be peaceful and patriotic. Why don't we go sit down and talk with the president's lawyers Talking and with, with them? Me. And I, I just wanted to sit down and say, okay, what are y'all looking to put forward? And there is no coherent basis on the point I just made. Which is Certainly what I urged the, the, the Trump defense lawyers under the standard they put forward for concluding incitement. If you look at his remarks on January 6th, he urged people, he, President he, Trump's comments were incitement. If you look at the comments of Bernie Sanders, of Nancy Pelosi, of Chuck Schumer, of Maxine Waters, if you look at Kamala Harris, and, and a point that I hope that, that President Trump's lawyers make tomorrow, about 15 minutes, on the legal standard for incitement, and that he mm -hmm. he did not praise he did. violence, he didn't encourage violence. I noticed violence. that wasn't in the videos. Uh, 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 that wasn't yeah, in they, the videos that were shown. They was edited out the word peaceful. But while delusions are false in the sense of not conforming to the facts of the external world, they are considered true to the psychotic, and so influence how they interact with the world and with other people. Whereas, and 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 my point is simple. Look, neither one of those were incitement. The ultimate goal here is for them to understand how the process actually works and the fact that there is one paper ballot for every vote cast in all of the territories and states that we've uh, serviced through election officials and that the count actually was correct. That's the ultimate goal. If you can get any of the Trumpers to admit that they were wrong and the election was legit, you would be doing some service to the democracy in light of the facts because the resistance is hard bitten. We have a, a First Amendment that allows robust, vigorous political debate from both sides, even when there is irresponsible or overheated rhetoric on either side. That's part of our political mm -hmm. process. The greatest threat to civilization. Inability to deal with the forces of our own psyche. A lot of fuck some of you, fuck them. Okay, well, you know. Quote, Senator Cruz, you must accept responsibility for how your craven, self-serving actions contributed to the deaths of four people yesterday and how you fundraised off this riot. Both you and Senator Hawley must resign. If you do not, the Senate should move for your expulsion. I mean, you, you've got Joaquin Castro, Beto O'Rourke, um, Representative Joe Moody, Tellerico, all of these uh, government officials making very similar statements, uh, saying there's blood on their hands, essentially. That being said, many members of Congress did do that. Many commentators did do that. Many in the media have been doing that for the last few weeks, constantly saying this is our time to fight. That followed. And where was the outrage from other people who were there from congressmen who were there. And the silence to me implies um, indifference. And it, I could be wrong, but indifference um, um, or complicity, yeah. um, just completely, or, or are people just so, they're so used to hearing this rhetoric, they don't even, they don't even listen anymore. So for us, for our family, and for each and every police officer that I know that, that Michael's in touch with constantly, it's outrageous. It's so dehumanizing, it's so devaluing, and it's, um, it, it's outrageous. Well, your, your point of view doesn't matter and will not be heard in the public square. And now we know that the Pentagon has stopped political appointments for any Trump allies to join defense advisory boards. That's been shelved. They can no longer do it, and the Pentagon is stopping anybody associated with Trump from joining these advisory boards. Forced two hours of debate? That was just some time for some opportunistic politicians to get five minutes of time on the floor. It was never That alone may have cost Trump the election. For months leading up to the presidential election, 
We were warned that we should not declare a premature victory. We were told repeatedly that it would take weeks, if not months, to determine the winner, to count the absentee ballots, and to verify the results. My opponent was told to stay away from the election. Don't campaign. We don't need you. We've got it. This election is done. In fact, they were acting like they already knew what the outcome was going to be. There is one ruling bloodline that exists on this earth. This ruling bloodline is very old. It is the same bloodline that has always ruled the earth ever since the days of ancient Egypt, and it is very pervasive. For example, Many people think that anyone can get to be President of the United States, but the reality is that all U.S. Presidents are in fact related, and their lineage can be traced back to European monarchy, and in particular to the line of William of Orange. The individuals who make up the infected society become morally and spiritually inferior. They sink unconsciously to an inferior intellectual level. They become more unreasonable, irresponsible, emotional, erratic, and unreliable. And worst of all, crimes the individual alone could never stand are freely committed by the group. They have the power of evidence because they're sworn under oath. These are, these are the things on which you bring indictments. Group uh, smitten by madness. And they allege massive cheating, particularly on the part of the Democrat Party of Detroit. Smitten by madness. Did you want this closer? I'm sorry. It was a very big surprise to me that our votes are sent out of the United States. Ballot package is to be sent to different citizens. And uh, what we do is we will do for different counting boards, 50, 50 pack, you know, 50 application will be there. So we, you, you will be making packages of 50 ballots. And uh, on the floor, um, they will let you know what they need to be um, put on that package the mailing date for that ballot. So I notice um, time to time, basically every day, um, whenever you prepare that package, the ballot package is always either three days, back date, three days, you know, not, not the same day, always days before that date. That's the first time I, I've heard that. I'm glad that you just shared that. That's an important piece of our history to understand that that occurred. You think about, I mean, you could use a number of adjectives, the, the idiots that... And when they, are, when they return the ballot to me, I can see how they are signing on the absentee ballot envelope. They return by envelope. So basically all four locations, you know, in the courier file, on the driver's license and on the application and on the ballot return envelope. So no. they are good. If, if, if all four of them are matched, I will receive that ballot into the QVF. I'll save it, and I will place my initial on the ballot return envelope, ballot number, date, and again initial. So two initials I have to place on the ballot return envelope when I am receiving the ballot. Well, if you look at what happened to Klein Smith, the lawyer that knowingly lied, that was clear, that pled guilty, uh, it looks like Peter Strzok is actually probably going to get reimbursed for all of his troubles, probably going to get paid uh, above and beyond. You know, the guy lost his job, but nothing's happened to him to this point. Uh, I'm obviously being sarcastic, but, you know, I have no idea if you let this lawyer off that was actually doctoring evidence, uh, how is anybody else going to ever pay the price? Now, look, I, I don't know uh, this guy's wife. Uh, maybe she's great. She could be a, a, a great uh, uh, public servant for all I know. But if you look at the larger picture. It's not a car. Yeah! I'm back! Oh, shit! Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Happy Hayden's Day. On November 22nd, 1963, a man called the President of the United States, passionate and committed communist, murdered Lee Harvey Oswald. There were a lot of questions about what happened, but in 1959, it's not for a moment. He talked incessantly. Instead, almost immediately, the media began spinning a very different story. And yet many Americans never really understood what Lee Harvey Oswald believed. The explanation was never very precise. President Kennedy had been murdered by conservatives, possibly by conservatism itself. So right-wing Kennedy was killed Lee Harvey Oswald. So Lee Harvey Oswald never, as they often put it, 
In 1959, it's not for a moment, and murdered by conservative. It was not a car. Still, Trump owes more than $3 billion, plus interest, to banks and bondholders. And it now appears that he is in for the fight of his life. And again, uh, I want to just, in leaving, I want to thank our Vice President, Mike Pence and Karen. I want to thank Congress, because we really worked well with Congress, uh, at least certain elements of Congress. Not the governor, not the Secretary of State. You were given that responsibility by our founding fathers. You don't get me. To agree with the assessment. The hoaxers, the people that were pushing this out from the very beginning and then lying about it after the fact, they're all at the top echelons of the uh, uh, administration. That's what is required by the Michigan official manual. You said that for your peace of mind, you insisted that people provide ID. Are you aware that people in Michigan can vote without identification? In fact, I've always voted that way. Oh, but you're, are, you're not aware of that? Ma Members of the audience, please, let's be respectful. Thank you. Ma'am, are you aware of that, ma'am? Are you? No. See, zero to 14 days, <clears throat> zero to 14 days, that is the restricted registration time. You have to have the ID and also the proof of residency. And if you don't have the driver's license, you have to submit an affidavit. And also, you have to have a passport or something, photo ID. That's my, that's my understanding. Okay, you're, you're confused. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jacob, uh, Judge Kenny has ruled that your testimony in court is incorrect and not credible. So why should we believe anything that you said here today? National Security Council, it's full of what I like to call it. When we call it the Russia hoax, but it's even more than that because it was so outrageous, Maria. Remember... They're really like P-tape hoaxers. May I, may I please finish? Incorrect. Remember all the nasty stuff that supposedly happened in Moscow? May I, may I please finish? Incorrect. This was not believable to anyone unless you had a sick, sick, demented mind. It costs no more. You minute brew Nescafe. She's never been a witness in court. It would have been impossible for a judge to Your rule. affidavit was ruled may I, may I please finish? incorrect and not credible. May I have the courtesy of uh, finishing? No. What, what, what? She has never been a witness in court, so no judge could ever have assessed her credibility. Uh, what is your question, Mr. Camilleri? Why are we listening to your story here today if it has already been ruled incorrect and not credible by a judge in court? Mm. These people knew that this was written by Fusion GPS. They knew that they were putting it out to... Uh, to willing uh, people within the media that would take and run with these narratives. And look, they, they'll deny this, but the FBI knew damn well, and the DOJ, there was a small cadre of them, they knew this was all a lie, and they were all part of it, and now the first guy that had been, in, had, had been indicted just skated. You can go and ask the judge who denied that, okay? I don't know anything about it. Uh, he says because he gave the uh, president, uh, vice president advice about uh, certifying what happened yesterday. But ultimately, so many of those people at the Stop the Steal rally w thought that that could happen. That's a fairy tale. So I have 19 things in my affidavit. Uh, I was at the TCF Center for 27 hours. I'm a mother. I have two children, and I have two degrees. I'm very... Um, I, I would never... I don't know any woman in the world that would write a an affidavit under oath. There has been, in the case of another one, not named in this lawsuit, uh, to my knowledge, Tucker Carlson, another of Fox's big names, 
that Fox had argued successfully that he couldn't be taken seriously. This was in a slander lawsuit that they were successful in rebuffing. They said he couldn't be taken seriously, um, that the general tenor of his show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. That was a quote uh, using, borrowing some of the argument of Fox. And then the judge went on about uh, her findings, which were that Fox persuasively argues that given Mr. Carlson's reputation, any reasonable viewer arrives with an appropriate amount of skepticism about the statement he makes. I mean, even his employer was saying that he could not be trusted to tell the truth. Is that, go is that kind of defense going to fly in the case of these other hosts who traffic this, uh, who, these other hosts who are people who trafficked the information that Smartmatic is talking about in this lawsuit? Yeah, let me tell you why. I find certainly no pride in the attacks that happened yesterday, but pride in yesterday. And I hope every school, those uh, that were out there rioting, all Americans, I hope they take the opportunity to go back and listen and watch three or four hours of debate from last night, say from 10 p.m. To, to 3 a.m. In the face of a $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit from Dominion Voting System, CNN Sarah Murray joins me now to discuss it. Just to write it. <laughs> you know, you can go to prison for this. Debate on, on both sides of that issue, he from both good. Republicans and Democrats. Well, I don't know how reasonable or unreasonable th they are, but millions of people believe the big lie, and there was an attack on the Capitol uh, based on her lies, her claims, and now there might be very real consequences for voters because of these lies that she now acknowledges nobody was supposed to take seriously. It, it was a renaissance of, of what I imagine it to be like when, when there was debate here going on with our founding fathers. That was the kind of debate that was going on. And it was the first time that I can say I witnessed that level of it in the four years that I've been here. And, and I take pride in that occurring regardless of where I found agreement or disagreement with individuals. People believed the big lie that the election was stolen. They believed that some of these machines had actually changed votes, even though there was no evidence to substantiate that. And we're seeing the next wave of those repercussions as we see a number of these uh, bills introduced in Republican-led legislatures across the country that would further restrict voting rights. And we're seeing legislators say, you know, people don't have trust in the electoral process. Of course, many of these Republicans who are saying that leave out the part that the reason people don't don't trust the electoral process is because Republicans were out there like Sidney Powell telling Americans they couldn't trust the process without any evidence to support it. So people are dead, people are injured, and now there is a big effort to disenfranchise millions of Americans based on these lies that, oh, we weren't supposed to believe them. And I take pride in that occurring regardless of right-wing fringe conspiracy theories peddling these unsubstantiated claims about election fraud. So now in a new court filing, her attorneys are arguing these were just her opinions, that it was up to the public to form their own opinion about whether votes were actually changed by these election machines. And one of the lines in this court filing, her attorneys say, no reasonable person would conclude that the statements were truly statements of fact. Now, of course, Jake, that's not how the former president, his legal team, Sidney Powell, even when she was distanced from the former president, represented this. They went out and told the American public that this was definitively what was happening. My manager had came up to, I had called my manager over to a specific uh, tabulating machine. I showed him a number on it, which was close to 500. It should never go over 50. Batches come in, ballots come in batches of 50. I said, we have a severe problem here. Nick Atanagmaganis, which is a part owner of Dominion. And um, he said, Melissa, I don't want to hear that we have a problem. He said, we are here to assist with IT. We are not here to run their election. That is exactly what he said to me. Um, at that point, I was just really frustrated and upset. I, I could tell what was going on. I, I knew what was going on at that point. What was going on? Um, he was in on it. He was in on it. They were all in on it. In on what? They were cheating. It, it, it was very, very apparent. It was apparent he knew. It was apparent that he was in on it. And when he caught on to me being in, knowing, me knowing that he was in on it, he just wanted nothing to do with me.
Yeah, John, it's official. Sidney Powell is a massive fraud. That's according to Sidney Powell herself. Similarly, the whole election fraud narrative, that too is a complete fiction, a complete fraud. That also according to Sidney Powell. And like you said, as Sidney Powell herself says, no reasonable person could believe this. It's also, importantly, not a legal defense here in a defamation case. It's not a good defense, a bad defense, a weak defense. It's just not a defense. It's actually the opposite of a defense because the two things Dominion has to prove here in order to win its lawsuit are one, the statements were false, and two, that the person who made the false statements knew they were false. Sidney Powell has now essentially come out and admitted both of those things. And those rioters and all Americans need to see that, if, uh, in my opinion, to have a full understanding of everything that was being argued with uh, Vice President Mike Pence and with the state constitutions and, and our, our Constitution of the United States of America, it, it is worth uh, the, the permanently being enshrined within the civics of our country um, to learn a lesson forever going forward. So Congress and Nick said that there was a big data loss. Um, they started freaking out, stepped off the stage, got on their phones. Um, also, Ellie, I mean, is it true? I mean, didn't a lot of people believe her? Wasn't there an insurrection at the Capitol? This minor matter of an insurrection at the Capitol where people who believe those false claims stormed the building, five people dead? I asked them what was going on. They said it was taken care of. Nick sent Samuel over to this warehouse. Not this time for about three hours. When he got back, I said, where were you? Where'd you go? Um, he said, I was at the warehouse. And I said, what were you doing there? And he's like, you know. Pure fiction. It's fiction. Nothing, they just needed my help. Well, um, I said, where is this warehouse? And he said. It's totally made said, up. Pure fiction. Because I, I wasn't putting two and two together yet that I you know, was initially supposed to work there because I'd never even looked up the address. It's fiction. It's fiction. And um, he. There was something to this defense, too, which may ring as familiar to some people. Call it the Fox News defense. This is an argument that Fox News or Fox, I should say, I don't want to overstep reality there. Fox lawyers have said in defense of some things that Tucker Carlson has said, he said, would a reasonable viewer be coming here and thinking this is where I'm going to be hearing the news of the day? Question mark. That was a lawyer. For Fox, it's very similar. It's very similar to the Sidney Powell argument. What I believe is it wasn't a data loss. It was actually when they found out Trump was ahead 100,000 100, votes, and they sent Nick over there to assist with these um, ballots that came in on in these um, vans full of ballots that people can attest to that they witnessed. No, we made this one up. Being carried out of these vans at the TCF Center. We made it up. I didn't see any ballots being carried out of vans. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't see anything being carried out of them, but I know people who have. What they're trying to do is take advantage of legal protections that are given to parody, to things that are obviously meant as sort of sarcastic or humorous social commentary. For example, if Saturday Night Live or Mad Magazine or The Onion ran an article saying essentially what Sidney Powell has been saying, that this election was stolen because of some bizarre hacking scheme involving Venezuela or something, but you saw it in The Onion, you would know, okay, obviously that's a joke. You can't sue The Onion for defamation. The fact that Sidney Powell and Fox are trying to say, well, we're like The Onion, we're like Mad Magazine, I think that says an awful lot and it's not gonna work legally. And he joins us this morning to tell us what happened. I know that you have said this was as morning. unpatriotic and appalling as it gets. What happened to you? Tell us what, what, I know you were at the House floor, you went into your office and you couldn't leave, is that right? I spoke, I walked off the floor, nothing was going on, and by the time I walked five minutes to my office, uh, this was playing out on the television, bearing out on the television, so it must have happened really directly on my heels. Mm. Um, but I really feel like I, I need to say this. The day is going to be filled with speculation about that attack yesterday. And it is a huge regret, wholly unpatriotic, un-American. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the, 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 the thing that I wish would be remembered about January 6, 2021, was the fact that democracy, uh, the pride of our country was literally attacked. And hours later, 
we resumed the democratic process that Indeed. we take so yeah. much pride in. That I wish that was what would be remembered about yesterday. Well, that's true. It's not. Uh, that'll be one of the things, but it's not. But I know people who have and did see this um, occurring. I also witnessed the adjudication process. Um, numerous adjudicators were machines were um, all the ballots were being judged by um, is so you know um, Democrats. I heard them talking. They one woman said to another woman, the, the, are you, the, the reason the rules there, okay. she said, well, so am I. Let's sit together, sat together all night judging ballots. You know, I mean, it's, thousands of ballots got judged all night by the, the, it can be a fair process. It, it can be a fair process. It, it can be a fair process. It wasn't a fair process. It wasn't a fair process at all. But a reordering of one's experiential world, which blends fact and fiction, or delusions and reality, in a way that helps end the feelings of panic. It, it can be a fair process. It wasn't a fair process. One of the 20th century's foremost authorities on schizophrenia. Firstly, there is the phase of panic, when the individual starts to perceive things in a different way, is frightened on account of it, appears confused and does not know how to explain the strange things that are happening. It wasn't a fair process. It, it can be a fair process. And the tabulating problem with them um, running numerous ballots through these tabulators and just continuing to do it. I had a friend that I knew for over 20 years, and he came up to me and said, he was working the night shift, he came up to me and said, Melissa, we did not get any training at all. None. The next step is what Arietti calls a phase of psychotic insight, whereby an individual succeeds in putting things together by devising a pathological way of seeing reality, which allows him to explain his abnormal experiences. The phenomenon is called insight because the patient finally sees meaning and relations in his experiences. None. But the he goes, I have no idea what I'm doing. He was with three other people. I said, um, uh, nope, we were trained on the adjudication process, not the tabulation process. A mass psychosis is an epidemic of madness, and it occurs when a large portion of society loses touch with reality and descends into delusions. Nobody wants to come forward. They're getting threatened. They're, they're people, their lives are getting ruined. I can't even get an actual job anymore. I can't. <laughs> because Democrats like to ruin your lives. That's why. All right. All right. <laughs> the insight is psychotic because it is based on delusions, not on adaptive and life-promoting ways of relating to whatever threats precipitated the panic. The delusions, in other words, allow the panic-stricken individual to escape from the flood of negative emotions, but at the cost of losing touch with reality. And for this reason, Arietti says that a psychotic break can be viewed as an abnormal way of dealing with an extreme state of anxiety. Your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It for, it, but they it, weren't actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? Oh, they weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. The American psychologist Alexander Lowen echoes this sentiment. Two factors are important in the dynamics of a psychotic break, he writes. One is an ego that is weak or insecure. The other factor is a flood of feeling that cannot be integrated by the ego. I don't even call them challengers. They were agitators. They were only there with one purpose. When GOP people or nonpartisan people signed up, we were only trying to ensure that there was integrity. Whereas when de Democratic challengers signed up, their only purpose there was to intimidate the GOP people and get them out. Such a phenomenon is not a thing of fiction. Two examples of mass psychoses are the American and European witch hunts of the 16th and 17th centuries, and the rise of totalitarianism in the 20th century. So that was what was happening on the, th on the 4th when I got on the floor. I didn't have my GOP tag on, so automatically I was assumed to be a Democrat. And uh, I have seen some women who came to me and said, Let the, let get, let's get these MFs out. 
And she was singing that song. And for me, I don't listen to secular music. And these days, you can't even tell what is cussing and what is a song. So I thought maybe she was really singing a song. But then when I saw that she was targeting white male Republicans. Through secrecy, they have so far been extremely successful in their endeavors. In fact, so much so that we are right now living in the time when they intend to see this long span work come to fruition. Accusing them of something like your mask slipped, you were not six feet away, so you need to go out and, you know, your phone was out. And they were really intimidating all these white people. And I put myself out there, tried to help them, saying, why are you getting them in trouble? And they said, why are you taking their side? Then I, then I showed my GOP tag. And then she said to me that I am on the wrong side because I had a GOP tag on. I was literally shocked that, you know, somebody can judge me because of my political affiliation and say whether or not I'm on the right side or wrong side. I can think for myself. During the witch hunts, thousands of individuals, mostly women, were killed not for any crimes they committed, but because they became the scapegoats of societies gone mad. But, uh, but then I, then at that point, uh, I saw that, Demo I mean, Republicans were getting escorted. Um, and so many people got escorted that we became like pretty scarce. Like we couldn't even man, like we had only one person manning like four or five tables because we were so low on numbers. And In some Swiss villages, writes Francis Hill, there were scarcely any women left alive after the frenzy had finally burned itself out. The totalitarian experiments of the 20th century are a more recent and a more deadly example of a mass psychosis. And there were so many democratic challengers there. So I just went to Election Integrity Fund and got my nonpartisan tag. And the reason I did that was not because um, I was not there for, for my party or trying to do something on behalf of my party. I'm just trying to ensure that the right thing is being done. So when I got the nonpartisan tag at the counting board, they, the poll workers were very respectful because of my nonpartisan tag. But when I had the GOP tag, the first thing they said is six feet. You know the rule, or you will be sent out. It was a collective detachment from reality and a descent into delusions and paranoia that permitted the rise of the all-powerful totalitarian governments that destroyed the lives of hundreds of millions. They didn't know what that meant, but it didn't take me long to figure out why it was saying what what it meant. Um, it is when they would scan a, ba scan a ballot, nothing nothing would come on the system. The totalitarian systems of the 20th century represent a kind of collective psychosis, writes the medical doctor Just Mirlu. Whether gradually or suddenly, reason and common human decency are no longer possible in such a system. There is only a pervasive atmosphere of terror and a projection of the enemy, imagined to be in our midst. Thus society turns on itself, urged on by the ruling authorities. So they would manually enter these. And uh, that's when I figured out that they were not even referring to the poll book. So it is EPB slash S, meaning election poll book or system. So none of these details were in either of those. And uh, the thing that um, I said, when I started uh, writing down the ballot numbers and the last names of the person of the ballot uh, the, that had the name on that ballot, they were all in sequence. These are absentee ballots, mail-in mail -in ballots. They cannot be in sequence. 2232 two, two cannot have 2233 two, next to it because if they're mailed in, they come in all different numbers. And when, when I started noticing that these numbers are almost next to each other, like one or the other was in the middle, but then they were almost next to each other, my, my antennas went up. That's exactly when I thought something is not right here. Then I asked the supervisor, there was not even a date on those uh, envelopes. It said November 0-2020. There was no second number there. Then I said, what is the date on this one? Then they got really mad at me. They said, you're not letting us do our job. You're disturbing us. And at that point, because we really don't want to be kicked out, you know, so we were just kind of not challenging anything because we want to still stay in the room because we barely had anybody. We are our own worst enemies, or as the Latin proverb puts it, Man is a wolf to man. In Civilization in Transition, Jung states that this proverb is a sad yet eternal truism, and our wolf-like tendencies come most prominently into play at those times of history when mental illness becomes the norm rather than the exception in a society, a situation which Jung termed a psychic epidemic. 
Um, not only that, the sequence ballot numbers were all from the same area, like the Goddard Street in the downtown Detroit. Goddard Street, sequential ballot, its signatures were all alike. They had no date stamp. It said like it was empty after zero. There was no third or second or first or nothing. And uh, they were none of them were coming up in the system. They were all being entered manually. They even knew that none of these details would even be in the poll book or in the system. Bogus election conspiracies that they knew were not true. The former president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and legal associate, Sidney Powell. Uh, Smartmatic, SGO Smartmatic, Smartmatic and Dominion, Smartmatic and uh, ESNS, which is another um, major voting machine. Now we know a lot more about Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Russia, yeah, three and a half right. million dollars, oligarchs, Chinese nationals, private equity. Uh, I think Joe Biden um, might not be liking his own positions coming up fairly shortly yeah. if this is the game he wants to play. And really the, co the core of these uh, voting systems are um, rife with vulnerabilities. Um, I was an information warfare officer. It's false. So I looked at ways to penetrate, uh, defeat and corrupt uh, other systems. It never happened. Whether it was through electronic warfare, through uh, other means. And these systems are. It's a fake. Highly, uh, highly vulnerable to penetrations at multiple levels throughout the system. Um, the, the easiest way and the most um, discreet way is a USB drives. Um, no way. Not this time. We created it. In classified systems in the military, um, I worked with both secret and top secret and other special access programs. All those machines uh, had the USB drives um, deactivated. You could not use them just because of the, the critical vulnerability. These, these machines all work off of USB drives, and so... It's a total fabrication. There is no control. There is no chain of custody in the USB drives. This one was invented by a writer. Workers can stick a USB drive in. We could stick a USB drive into any of your laptops. It never happened. You don't know what's on there, and, and, and you can change software. You it never happened. You can change operating systems with the USB drive. It's a made-up tale. Blank ballots. They can delete data. They can uh, blank. They can mass adjudicate uh, write-in ballots. And so it's it is designed to be inaccurate. It's designed to if if a an individual or a team of individuals uh, had a malign purpose, um, this would be the tool that I would want to use. And all I can tell you is it never happened. We let them get away with this. I don't know what ca what happens after this. This was a concerted plan to fix this election. It never happened. It never happened. Workers can stick a USB drive in with the USB drives. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's an urban legend to, uh, that never happened. Some of the, uh, the leaked information from the Panama banking system. No way. We got you. Not a chance. Week, thousands of people join the millions who already have MCI friends and family. If you'd like to be one of them, give us a ring. After all, shouldn't your least expensive calls be to the people you care about and call all the time? That we didn't get a chance to call. There are hundreds of them, and they specifically allege similar acts of fraud. It never happened. Rudy Giuliani likely won't be the last person sued by Dominion voting systems, but the former president's lawyer is looking at a $1.3 billion lawsuit. Why? Saying this. This Dominion company is a radical left company. These crooked Dominion machines. They cheated with the machines. Then a Venezuelan company countered our votes that if you do the slightest bit of due diligence, you will find out that this company has been in trouble many, many times, was just disqualified in the state of Texas, under another name was thrown out of Chicago. We, we've, what we are seeing right now, I don't think we've ever seen before, um, and it's affecting certainly our good name, um, and, it's, and, and it's raising serious doubts in electors' minds across the country in its infancy had ties with Hugo Chavez, Venezuela, conducted fraudulent elections in two South American countries, and have been disqualified in several other countries and states. 
the 1.3 billion, there's certainly a lot of questions on that. So there is no money, Chris, that can even begin to make up for the damage and reputation uh, that our company and the customers, the election officials that have used our technology to count ballots. And um, it, it, the actual calculation of the $1.3 billion $1. is, a, is a legal calculation and, and we will, we will play that out in court. Uh, but if I could trade our reputation back from November 1st and go back before uh, these false accusations were lobbed against us and our employees, I would do that in a heartbeat. They all stand accused of fi- spinning a fake tale with zero evidence that Smartmatic's voting technology was somehow compromised and to blame for the former president's election loss. Today's announcement came as something of a surprise. It had been widely thought the banks would lend Trump enough money to help him get through the summer season. Yeah, I would say 22nd, third week of September, we were, um, we were kind of started One packing, you know, making the pack. People, this is a great, lawsuit. great country. It is my greatest honor and privilege to have been your president. If he cannot pay, Trump's creditors could take over his properties and sue him for what he still owes. Say, you are amazing. Donald Trump disappointed his many creditors today. He announced he could not make scheduled payments of more than $30 million. Trump could choose to protect himself in bankruptcy court. If he does file in bankruptcy, that automatically stops foreclosure and keeps him in control of the casino and keeps him operating the casino. I will always fight for you. But Donald Trump will have a hard time. The yacht alone costs more than $250,000 a month. Just the interest on the ultimate Florida beach house is more than $100,000. I will be watching, I will be listening, and I will tell you that the future of this country has never been better. I wish the new administration great luck and great success. And it does not count the cost of the private jet, the helicopter, taxes and maintenance on the three-story, 50-room New York apartment, or the scores of servants and bodyguards. I think they'll have great success. They have the foundation to do something really spectacular. And again, we put it in a position like it's never been before, despite the worst plague to hit since, I guess you'd say 1917, over a hundred years ago. And despite that, despite that, the things that we've done have been just incredible. And I couldn't have done done it without you. So just, a goodbye. We love you. We will be back in some form. Too. Perhaps Trump is proving that the very rich are different from most of us, even when they just have more debts than we do. Have a good life. We will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very similar to the witnesses that you heard. Uh, I, I find it puzzling that there seems to be such confusion about it. Maybe because of my background as a prosecutor, it's pretty obvious to me what happened here. It's an urban legend that never happened. Uh, The the Democratic leader in Pittsburgh, in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or in Philadelphia, or in Detroit, or in Las Vegas, or in Phoenix, or in Milwaukee, or in Minneapolis, or in Atlanta, didn't wake up on election morning. Come in when all those and decide we're going to shut out all the Republican poll watchers. If you'd like to be one of them, give us a ring, or as many as we can. I mean, we, we've been counting absentee ballots forever. I did it myself when I was a young lawyer. Republican sits on one side, Democrat sits on the other side. We don't have any problem with it. This was uniform shutting out of as many Republicans as possible. In Pennsylvania, 890,000 ballots were cast secretly, with no Republican getting a chance to take a look at the ballot. It's fiction. 
We made up this one. We made it up. I'm wrong. And in Pennsylvania, there are 600,000 more votes counted, mail votes counted, than mail ballots they can find. Not this time. Uh, this, is a, this is a swindle. You're wrong. Not this time. It's a con job. This time. It's a, Not this time. It's a theft of an election. Wrong. Not wrong. this time. Not this time. It never happened. Stormy Daniels. You should spend time taking a look at Pennsylvania, look at Philadelphia, look at Pittsburgh, look at how eerily similar it is to what these people testified to. Read the rest of these and see that there are hundreds of people that back them up. That election center in Detroit was a disgrace. You should be ashamed of it as citizens of Michigan. I would be ashamed of it if it was in New York, and it could easily be in New York. A one and I would do everything in my power to make sure it never happened again. Dollar and I, would never, I would never certify an election or have my name associated with anything that was false. The defamation lawsuit filed today in Manhattan states without any true villain, defendants invented one. Defendants decided to make Smartmatic the villain in their story. We reached out to Fox News and they responded, Fox News Media is committed to providing the full context of every story with in-depth reporting and clear opinion. We are proud of our 2020 election coverage and will vigorously defend this meritless lawsuit. Oh, oh my God, beyond truth. Let's, let, they accused the Democrats, uh, the Trump family, of doing something illegal for trying to build a hotel in Russia. If you thought that was a problem, how in the world can you give Hunter Biden a pass, given everything he did, taking millions of dollars from the most corrupt company in the Ukraine, Burisma, uh, going all over China to get sweetheart deals. If you really thought the Trump family did something wrong but trying to do business lawfully in Russia, then what are you going to do about Hunter Biden? But I just want to end it with this. What makes matters worse is that those suffering from a mass psychosis are unaware of what is occurring. For just as an individual gone mad cannot step out of his mind to observe the errors in his ways, so too there is no Archimedean point from which those living through a mass psychosis can observe their collective madness. I hope you will use the power you have to stop it before it's too late. The phenomenon we have witnessed in Germany was nothing less than an outbreak of epidemic insanity. No one knew what was happening to him, least of all the Germans, who allowed themselves to be driven to the slaughterhouse by their leading psychopaths, like hypnotized sheep. I hope you will use the power you have to stop it before it's too late. Well, there is a case, considering this is the second lawsuit in as many weeks as we've seen, about the same factual predicate, the idea of the disinformation campaign, the idea of how it tarnished reputations and how there could be a financial cost to these companies in being able to survive if you have this attachment, this scarlet letter that suggests somehow that they are nefarious actors as opposed to conduits of people exercising the right to vote. It takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a new kind of coffee. It's more than an instant. It's new Minute Brew Nescafe. Anybody can make a coffee more instant, but... Stormy Daniels. A new kind of coffee. Minute Brew. Minute Brew. A new way to hold in extra rich flavor. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come up. You're a little cutie pie. Yes, she is. <laughs> You're a beautiful little potato bug. Super hot. <laughs> You're a gorgeous mamacita flower blooming onion in California. Cali you don't have to sweet talk me. I'm kind of a sure thing. Bien chingona. Do no. Hell Do you? No. If you agree, it takes more than an instant to make a cup of coffee. No. Hell Do you? No. I'm the king, man. I'm king shit. You're little. You're small. You don't get me. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come out. It's time and to make a real cup of coffee. Oh! Buy this completely new kind of coffee today. New Minute Brew Nescafe. It's more than an instant. What, Hannibal?
Thank you for seeing you again. Dude, what happened to you? Bro, I needed you. Trump sent the ominous tweet around 7 p.m. Pacific aimed at Ted Cruz, who he accused of using a semi-nude photo of his wife, Melania, from a previous GQ photo shoot. That ad actually came from anti-Trump super PAC Make America Awesome in an effort to dissuade Mormon voters from picking the billionaire businessman. The PAC's founder, Liz Mayer, told Vox... Kind of a sure thing. Bien chingona. No. Hell Do you? No. Cruz responded over Twitter to the threat a short time later, referencing wife Heidi Cruz. There's no coherent way for them to say but all of our guys who have done it and done it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Slut shaming Melania Trump. My point is very simple. Mm -hmm. The standard the Democrats have put forward, because we don't like Donald Trump, he's guilty. Uh, look, Donald Trump didn't bail out. Melania Trump. Kamala Harris did. And so if, if the Democrat standard were to prevail, the next time mm -hmm. the, Democrat, the, the Republicans get control of the House, you could anticipate. That is yeah, no, a China terrible is outcome. Already. This is not meant to be politically weaponized. In the end, the coordinated lying paid off. We're watching our own history being written before us right now. He gave up his American passport and defected to the Soviet Union. There he married a Russian woman and lived in Minsk. Three years later, he returned to this country and immediately began attending rallies in support of Fidel Castro, the communist leader of Cuba. In the fall of 1963, Oswald traveled to Mexico City and met with KGB agents there. A few months before, in Dallas, he tried to murder General Edwin Walker because Walker had given speeches attacking communism. Think very clearly, they've been lying to people. They've been lying to millions. So please help us. We're watching our own history being written before us, right now. All right. I'm out. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer. So please help us. I'm sorry? Do you have a point of order? Yes. What is your point of order? Point of order is to have them under oath. This but you're allowing people to come in here and lie, and I know they're lying. Representative, uh, you're out of order. I've given, I've indulged you, but you're out of order, and we're going to move on. And on behalf of my witnesses, I would like to point out that every single witness we've presented here has sworn an affidavit as to all of these facts. You didn't need me. The power is in you. I never existed this whole time. Go back, watch the tapes. I'm almost... Life is stupid, do whatever. You could die or live forever. I don't know what to do now, we just don't know. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come out. Um, and, but, you know, there, there are definitely going to be people who slip through the cracks and are not going to be. Um, found in any way, shape, or form. So it's just a matter of fact. But you know what? Whatever fine they, these people or whatever jail sentence somebody might incur, it doesn't even begin. It doesn't begin to repair the damage that has been done to not only Michael, but all these other people who, who, who really were, they were the ones that were persecuted. But at this point, the truth doesn't matter. What matters is who gets to write the history of what happens. Her Clinton Foundation slush fund sold access to the State Department. New charges dogging the Democratic nominee. That, that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may have Russian indictments investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming? Allegations of pay-to-play. Proof of a pay-for-play scheme, pay-to-play arrangement between uh, the foundation and Hillary. Exactly. Here, here we go. That, well, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, Mr. President. Clinton, just how easy it was for Clinton donors to get
get Clinton favored. We know a dirty paper play scheme when we see it, but not Hillary's spokesman, who arrogantly tells voters who question the Clinton Foundation's ethics. If any American voter is troubled by the idea that the Clintons want to continue working to solve the AIDS crisis on the side while Hillary Clinton is president, then don't vote for her. Then don't vote for her. Then don't vote for her. I think you should let me run the country, you run CNN, All right. and if you did it well, your ratings well, let me ask, much better. If I, if I okay, may ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask one other ahead. question, are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's that had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President. Me. That's enough. Mr. President. They've been lying to millions. Think very clearly, they've been lying to people.